Hey, this is Steven from Steven's Classic Garage. Uh, welcome to part two of the Go Kraut uh, cross member, A1 cross member reinforcement bar video. So in this video, I'm not going to really rehash much of what I said in the first video about why you would want to buy one of these, because uh, I already went through that. I'm just going to talk about the quality, what makes this one a scratch and dent uh, product and thus $20 cheaper than the other one, uh, which I would definitely suggest you do. Who cares if there's scratches on this bar? You'll save 20 bucks and you could spend that on other components of the car or gas or whatever. So uh, basically we're going to spend most of this 11 and a quarter minute video of part two uh, showing you guys uh, in depth a uh, look at this bar. Uh, some of the things that do look a little strange and curious on uh, whether or not they're going to affect the uh, assembly. And uh, so we will bring this guy close in and we will go over uh, some of its features. And um, then in the next video we will install it and I will shoot a video after I installed it talking about uh, installation process, uh, anything that um, uh, any notes that you should watch out for and uh, short shore falls and stuff like that and things I would change with the bar uh, etc. So number one um, I will have this bar's weight in the description so I think regardless of the weight I think it's gonna be worth uh, that oh so interesting here if you see here they have little um, press points in a pretty much the exact same location. So that's probably how they bent the bar. So they put something across here and then that's how they put a put a bend in the bar. That's interesting. So if you'll see here, it is really, really nice powder coating. It's this like satin kind of um, spackle coating, I guess you could call it. It's a uh, really, really nice industrial style uh, coating. It's uh, obviously you can see it's a uh, satin, um, maybe flat. I'm, I'm gonna say it's probably satin, uh, satin kind of uh, color, and it's really nice even on the scratch and paint version, scratch and dent version. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you why it is a scratch and dent version. If you look here, you'll see that there is some scratching here in the powder coating, right? So that's basically what makes it a scratch and dent. And there are some other imperfections on the inside here. So here and here, there are other imperfections in the coating. And so what I'm assuming is that this is made from some manufacturer other than uh, them themselves. And so once they get it, they can't really repowder coat it because they don't have the equipment. It's made somewhere else, so once they get it, they say, hey, you know, it's already, we don't have the equipment to recode it, so let's ship it out. That's what I'm assuming. Um, so that's why that is. But other than those uh, couple spots, I mean, it's, it's pretty much flawless. As far as dents, I mean, like I said, there's these, these little recess marks, one here, one here, and the same exact distance from the middle here and here. So that's probably where they press the bar forward to bend the bar. So um, other than that, I think it's really good. You can see the weld quality here. I'm thinking that this is MIG. It could be TIG, but really, really nice uh, MIG bead. It hasn't been ground, but that's okay. You know, that's just extra time, really. Um, that doesn't really need to be spent. So you can see really nice uh, MIG all the way around. Really nice bead. They should look like you know quarters, um, quarters in a line pressed over. So this is really really good quality weld. And then over here in the corners, also really really good quality weld. Let me flip it up. Really really good quality weld. You can see a little bit. There's like some. The bare metal spot right there, but really, really good quality weld. And these components, these uh, sections here, 
are probably, this one's thinner than the sides, so this one's probably an eighth inch or three sixteenths uh, plate. I'm going to say probably three six, eh, probably three sixteenths. And then these edges are quarter inch plate. It looks like I have a quarter inch plate. Oh, actually, here we go. I got my calipers right here. I forgot they're still in here, so. Here are my calipers. These are my home calipers. These are my eye gauging. I really do like these calipers, but now I have other calipers for work that are uh, coolant and other stuff compliant, so. Um, it is eighth inch plate, so this middle section here is eighth inch plate. And the outside section oops, is quarter inch plate. Yep, so eighth inch plate in the middle, quarter inch plate on the side. So obviously, that's a nice big plate on the side. And this beam is pretty big. I'm going to say it's, it's a two inch beam, two inch by one inch uh, square tubing. And obviously, it's been pressed. And it looks like also there are two notches, one here also one here so maybe that's for holding down the bar because they're exact same spot parallel with each other exact same distance from the center so I'm thinking that that's supposed to be there for some sort of holding the bar down while it uses the press to bend this bar so um, one of the other things that's kinda of strange is if you look at this bar when it's coming out you can see that it's kind of crooked, this this particular plate right here. So I'm wondering how that's going to affect it. And you can kind of tell by how much space is here compared to how much space is there. And you can just look at it. If I flip it over, you can tell that it is sideways. I'm not holding it weird. I'm holding it straight with respect to the camera. You can see that it is just it's sideways. So, uh, I don't know how much that is going to affect it. Hopefully they have really, really low tolerance on these holes. So, uh, it would be really easy to put bolts in there, hopefully. And uh, so, hopefully there and also on the edges. So, as you saw in the first video, I did talk about the history of this bar on their website. So, uh, they said that they lowered the tolerances. So I'm hoping that that is correct, and they in, indeed uh, lowered the tolerance in order to have the solid, um, the solid plates on the end, and thus uh, hopefully it has uh, um, good. Uh, um, hopefully it's easy to bolt on uh, because of that, because uh, otherwise we'll have to go in here with a Dremel and open these holes up in order to get the bolt down. Again, it doesn't, you know, it just has to bolt down. This is just, this is not some sort of something that slides back and forth. This is not a machine. This is just a static uh, brace component. So it just has to bolt in. It really doesn't matter. So even if I have to open this up and put a, a washer on this bolt that goes here um, to keep it from falling through, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. But obviously I'm going to ding the... Uh, the product for that because I have to modify the product in order to put it on so other than that it seems really nice there is no burrs so they knocked all the burrs off before they powder coated um, so I think it's going to install nice and flat and I think it's with this powder coating I think it's gonna last a long time and it's not super shiny so it's not gonna look weird underneath the car. Of course in my car it is going to look weird because I have the uh, agate brown, kind of the Rocky Mountain brown color, so uh, you're going to be able to see it. But overall it is a very, very nice component and it makes me want to use powder coating on a lot of other projects. I have powder coated a couple things, but it, it really looks nice and it's really good quality and I would like to see what uh, powder coat company and uh, material that they're using here. What type of you know color and and obviously texture and stuff uh, they are using because it really gives that that industrial feel. So overall, really really nice. Um, I will have the weight in the description. It is definitely not a lightweight component. It definitely has some weight to it. 
but I think it's going to be worth its weight. It probably could have gone for my horsepower uh, change of adding just uh, just doubling it, adding just a little bit more horsepower. I think it could have went with uh, maybe some thinner wall steel. This is definitely thick wall steel here. Uh, could have definitely gone with the thinner walled steel and maybe even uh, aluminum because again here uh, you have this bar here that is orientated this is basically how it's orientated on the car right these bolt up to where the where the um, bumper bolts up right because as you saw in the installation uh, part of the first video the looking at their installation instructions so it should it should uh, um, have a lot of uh, anti-bending here uh, in this particular uh, orientation here with the bar so they got that right so it looks like it, it was engineered correctly uh, to the best of its weight as far as rigidity and um, I'm excited to try it out so stay tuned for the installation and uh, review video uh, probably this weekend thanks for watching catch you in part three